Okay, gentlemen, right down this way. Kevin? Okay. All right, back up. So that's Richard Brinsley, the Irish terrorist. He didn't look like a monster. No two days growth of stubble, no fanatics gleam in the eye. I came to testify for Ned Crocker because Ned Crocker isn't the only one on trial here. It's anyone anywhere who stands up to British oppression in Ireland. Okay, boys, move on now. Was that what made him so frightening? That he was just like the rest of us? Only from a corner of the world with crueler problems than ours? Guarding an outlaw who's testifying for the defense. Ah, uh, but you forget one thing, Tommy. He's an Irish outlaw. We'll take real good care of him. This is impossible. The man's testifying tomorrow. I have to be able to talk with him. We'll arrange for him to talk to you before trial. Sixty-one to Central. O'Brien. Good. O'Brien is it? And what part of Ireland would your people be from? Never mind my people. Beaches. Everything quiet in here? Yeah. Check upstairs? Yeah. I said I. Hello? Hi. So, anybody want some coffee? Yeah, I'd love one. It's gonna be here all night. Yeah. Instant okay? Ah, don't you bother. This is a marvelous contraption. Reminds me of my granny's corset. No, you let old Brinsley make your pot of tea the way the outlaws drink it. Sure, to make a man of you, sure. <laughs> Well, I, I'm not so sure. <laughs> Anything up there to worry about? Oh, it looks okay. It's okay here. What's eating you? Nothing's eating me. You got something on this guy we don't know about? You know about it. It's no secret. Come on, Kevin. He's a nice guy. He's a killer. There's a lot of guys in the force who think he's a hero. I mean, you're Irish. I mean, you know. That doesn't mean we have to be buddies. Are 
you think he's a hero, hmm? I don't know enough about it. That'll be out of your mind. Bringing him in as a defense witness? Everybody in this country knows he's a terrorist, for God's sake. What an ugly word, Ned. That happens to be why we need him. Oh, yeah. You need him. Look, I'll get hung if this turns into a political circus. It's a political trial. If we don't scream when they try to nail one of our supporters, the checkbooks will snap shut so loud they'll hear it all the way over in Belfast. Well, that's not my problem. I did my part. Now, if you and the council are trying to make a martyr out of me for the old cause... The old cause doesn't need martyrs. Not on this side of the Atlantic. You're still useful in other ways. Well, I'm through being useful. She's looking for and look where it got me. It's not that simple, Ned. The council hired me to get you off, and I will. They'll expect your continued support afterwards. He was a, a scary old man. That's what I recall about Yates. He wore glasses that thick that frightened the devil out of me. I used to hide under the porch whenever I saw him coming. How long did he stay with you? Oh, part of a summer in the cottage down by the lake. My father was always putting up somebody, and they all came. Oh, it was a gorgeous place. Acres of green fields as green as Ireland herself, and woods as deep as forests. So your um, folks were rich? Oh, they were. How did you um, become a... a terrorist? That word doesn't scare me, Frank, because I know what the reality is. My brother Tom was a Republican. The British came and took him away and hanged him in the yard of Crumlin Road Jail. I was just uh, 11 at the time. And the next day, I went out and shot at a British soldier. Make you feel any better? It never has. I'm not a thug, Mr. O'Brien, whatever you think. Are you so far from Ireland that you feel no pain when you see the bloody foreigners rule the country? It doesn't justify terrorism. And how would you suggest we fight White Hall? Not by blowing up a pub full of people. I'm a soldier, Mr. O'Brien. In an army that's as bad as the injustice they're fighting. It's not black and white, Kevin. It's not. There's a whole country full of dying and killing. They're using machine guns over the back fences. And you know who's getting blown away, Frankie? As usual, innocent bystanders, mainly. Kids. Right, Brinsley? That's your idea of being a soldier? For the old sod, is it? What price, sir? Look at me. Look at me! Do you see a cripple? A souvenir of the last time I was Her Majesty's house guest. Were you innocent, Brinsley? No, oh, they didn't give me a trial. That's your damned British justice. I fight them till I die. And if you weren't so smug hiding behind your sentiments and your fine morals, you'd be fighting for Ireland alongside me. Mr. Brimsley. Gee, Kevin. You don't know a damn thing about it, Frankie. Didn't you already say that? No, I didn't say that.
undercover a police beat and an international figure is murdered while the cops are protecting him. That's a hell of a story. But when the cops who did the protecting are friends, it's not one you're eager to write. Lou? The shot came from around back. Where's O'Brien? He's inside. I can't believe this. Carson? Carson? Yes, sir. What do you got? Not much of anything. Check door to door. Maybe somebody saw a car and noticed a stranger. Yeah, but some of these people are still sleeping. With Wake them. Yes, sir. Yes, so, Neil. Lieutenant Hogan. What do you got? Take this Something kid to the garage and run all the way back to here. 751. It's a dark late model sedan. It's one in connection with a homicide. That's exactly where was he standing? It's right up there against the sink. All right. No, I don't know the first all three the numbers. The I knew I'd give them to you, wouldn't I? How long is it going to take? On top. The bullet caught him right there is a little bit shorter than you are. Uh, don't tell me this afternoon. I know it's a long list. That's what you got computers for. I want to buy 10, all right? All right, what does it give you? I'd say the top of that garage right there. That's what I figured, too. All right, have him check up there for the shell and look in the storm drains. Okay. What a mess. How do you figure the guy knew where Brimsley was? You tell me. Somebody on the inside tipped him, or he followed you here. What, if we're not in collusion with the killer, then we're incompetent? Is that what you're saying? I'm not saying anything. I'm just asking questions. Well, so am I. The guy's dead, Kevin. You want me to write it, Joe? Well, you got to tell me what your way is. Tom, give us a break. I need five minutes with Kevin. Yeah. Now, this isn't the time to make a statement. I'm not here to make a statement. I just want to find out what's happened. Are you sure you weren't followed? You might know when I'm being followed. Who arranged for this house? The commissioner's office. Someone's looking into it. What do you mean, someone's looking into it? Internal affairs. Well, where in the hell were they when someone was shooting through the window? Kevin, right now, I am taking the heat for this thing. Lieutenant! They've been trying to get rid of people like Richard Brinsley and Ed Crocker for years. They were railroading Crocker, and Brinsley was my defense witness. Draw your own conclusions. Are you saying the police set him up? They were supposed to protect him. He didn't do any of the shooting. Tonight. Very good. You call him a terrorist, and that makes it all clear. But in Ireland, they call him a hero. The fact is, your police put him in that house. And the killer knew where to find him before his testimony could demolish their tissue of lies. That's preposterous, Your Honor. It is overblown, I'll grant that. Tissue of lies went out with Clarence Darrow, Counselor. I'll try to watch it, Your Honor. The fact remains I can't defend my client if my star witness is dead. You couldn't defend him, period. We're prepared to prove exactly when, where, and how many tons of munitions Crocker sent over to Ireland. The man is a death merchant. So she decides he doesn't deserve a defense. I move to dismiss the charges, Your Honor. Come back to the real world, Robin. Witnesses die all the time, and it's still not grounds to dismiss. It is when the police, uh... The police what? Prevent their appearance through negligence. Orlando versus Myers, a witness slipped on the ice outside the courthouse. Yes, I'm aware of the case, Mr. Delacort. He slipped on the ice? He went into a coma. It should have been Sanity Lane, like the police should have protected Brinsley. I suggest you read up on the case, Miss Jeffers. You'll need to answer it in your brief. I'm going to entertain your motion to dismiss, Mr. Delacorte. Dismissal? My clerk will let you know when I've scheduled a hearing. What kind of... If you have anything to say, Miss Jeffers, I'll listen to it then. Oh, Elaine. I think uh, these are yours. You know they'd see her first. Can't imagine what she can tell them. I want to shake her up. She'll be okay with it. Kevin. All right? <laughs> Come here, sweetheart. Listen, don't worry. He ain't gonna rat on you. You mind putting it out? Like I told Brody, this isn't an adversary proceeding. The department just wants to lay out all the facts. Are there any uh, report he gave you, Lieutenant? Mm, approximately 3.50 a.m., the subject went into the kitchen. 
Where were you when this happened? In the living room. Show me. Jim Bone? Brody? Was she asleep? No. None of you were asleep? No, he just said that. At 10 minutes to 4. Whose turn was it to keep an eye on him? That's not the way we whacked it up. Why not? It just wasn't. Isn't that normal procedure? I don't know what you mean. Why were we all up? We were talking. That's not what she says. Come on, Lieutenant. He's been around too long for that kind of crap. So you were just talking. He went into the kitchen, and you just let him go. No, we followed him. And we paraded him up and down in front of a brightly lit window with a target on his chest. Being uncooperative is not in your best interest, O'Brien. Go ahead, put down uncooperative. What'd they tell you downtown? We're embarrassed, make it look like it's their fault? Well, you can write that without my help. Thanks, Frank. Just take this cup of coffee and relax. Oh, over here. Yeah, Freddy. What's this? This from DMV. Would you believe there were that many cars with license plate ending in 751? Well, what are we waiting for? Start with the ones registered locally. I want to know where every one of these cars was at 4 this morning. Provide it however you want. Come on, Frank, you saddle up. We got work to do. Let's go. Boss's car. Harder, huh? Doesn't sound very Irish. Could be English. Could be anything. Let's give it a try. What can I do for you guys? Detective O'Brien, this is Detective Jambone. Are you Jack Harder? That's me. What's the problem? Is that your car up there, Mr. Harder? What, the, the, the blue one? Yeah. Yeah, that's mine. What's this about? Mind telling us where you were early this morning? Is this something serious? About 4 a.m. Home in bed. Would you mind telling me what this is about? Can you verify that? I'm a widower. Did anyone have permission to use that car? Well, what is this? Was my, uh, my car in an accident? Who could have been using it? Hold it right there. I've asked you six times what this is about. I was home alone. No one was in my car. Now, what the hell is going on here? The car at the scene of a homicide had placed the same as yours. What homicide? You own a rifle, sir? Get the hell out of here! You're all right, Mr. Harder. Sit down. You're lucky to come downtown with us, Mr. Harder. Do you have a warrant? Let me see your warrant. Can't you see he's a sick man? Getting a little crowded in here. Yeah, I could use some fresh air. Excuse me. Excuse me. court was a madhouse, but I managed to get your search warrant for Miss Carter. Good. And I stopped at Pino's Perfect Pizza on the way home. They're poisonous, but they're fast. Oh, Pino's. Mm -hmm. Just like Mama's cooking. Your Mama's cooking. You know, we'll make sure you guys save me some, huh? Yeah, Pino's is due for an oil change. Two years for 10,000 slices, which ever comes See, this warrant is just for the car. I know, I couldn't get the house or the office. If you're looking for a gun, and you have reason to think that it's at his house, then it's not at his office. And if you think that it's at his office, then it's not at his house. Mm, so why do we get to convict anyone? Well, there's a logic to it. 
Crazy logic. Okay, thanks. Immigration says Harder hadn't applied for or renewed a passport in the last 20 years. No criminal record, no trips to Ireland, no association with any fringe groups we can identify. What kind of suspect are we dealing with anyway? Mm -hmm. Innocent? No, no, he knew all about it. He mentioned Brinsley before we did, and I'd like to find out why. Kirkwood. Tommy, can you do me a favor? That thing you got down there, can you run a name through it for me? Wow. Um, Typing up my column now. Ah, oh, what the hell. You ruined my train of thought anyway. Well, we've checked him everywhere. No record, no nothing. Just give me the name, will you? I mean, the paper pays a zillion dollars a microsecond for this thing. Jack C. Harder. Jack C. Harder. What'd he do? That's what you're supposed to tell me. How long's this thing gonna take? Uh, not long. Yeah, here it comes. Just a couple of general entries. Um, Wedding. Father of Michelle. Mm. Well, pick one and run it. Under Michelle. Uh, mostly sports events. A lot of them. Wait a minute. Funeral. Go on. I'm ahead of you. The Times. She was in London for a track meet. This a couple of years ago. She was killed. Irish terrorist planted a bomb in her hotel. The terrorists apparently meant the bomb for somebody else. Detective O'Brien, I'll be back to you. Mr. Harder, I killed Richard Brinsley. This is a gun I used. You can run tests on it. You need proof. I imagine you'll need to know why. My daughter. Brinsley and those lunatics killed her. There was nothing left of her under all that rubble. Beautiful child. There was nothing left of her. Did you ever see her run? Did you watch her run? pretty face grinning out at me from the safety of her circle of friends. I ask, how could we permit that ancient madness to hurt her? Mere anarchy indeed has been loosed on the world. Makes everything so much easier. But there's nothing easy about this one. It's a dead loss. All the way around. Everybody's a victim, and you've just locked up the latest one. Not the last. No. I guess he isn't, is he? Does it ever stop? No. Nope. Come on, I'm going home. Give you a lift. shot Brinsley. Confessed tonight. We didn't catch him. He just walked in. Oh, boy, that's great. You know who it was? Remember that girl, that runner, was killed in that bomb blast in London a couple years ago? Yeah. It's her father. God. When I was taking his confession, I swear if it was up to me, I'd have told him to go home and forget it. You 
was only 18 and... It was so damn clear with Brinsley. Now, this guy's a killer, too, isn't he? He isn't the same, Kevin. Yeah, that's why I can't figure. It's hard when it's... when it's not black and white. He showed me this picture of his... of his daughter. And I knew what he felt. Maybe that's the difference. I'm gonna get you that coffee. And Brinsley, and he watched his brother get hanged. He was 11 years old. I... I just don't know what I think anymore. Mr. Harder, wake up. You're due in court. Mr. Harder? Mr. Harder? Mr. Harder? Call an ambulance, quick. that case law as soon as possible. Yes, Mr. Delacour. I'll have that ready for you this evening. All right, all right. Freedom, okay? Nothing in the world beats it. Your defense lawyer's favorite toast. But you're not free yet, Ned. You're just out on bail. Yeah, you'll take care of it just like you took care of everything else. I'm thinking of running for sainthood. You'd nominate me, wouldn't you, Ned? <laughs> sure. Anything you say. Turned out different than you planned, but you sure delivered. I can't believe Brinsley's testimony was strong enough to get me off. Don't be a fool. What? His testimony was worthless. His death is getting you off. Don't pretend to be shocked. You set him up. I give you an old warrior, Ned. Him for you. A straight trade. For some reason, they thought it was worth it. You're a free man today, Ned Crocker. And you'll give your all to the Republican cause. Will you touch me glass to that, Ned? I never thought of that. Oh, I didn't even think of myself till now. But you heard the confession. He said he followed the car, right? Room 26. Nobody followed us. Right. The guys in the radio car would have seen him. And besides, he left the station in a van. Why didn't he mention that? Well, do you think that makes a difference? That's what I'm going to find out. Yes. I need to ask a few questions, nurse. It's doctor. And I'm sorry, gentlemen, but you can't come in here. Not right now. We just need a few minutes. Look, the man's got a damaged heart. He's got asthma. And we have him very heavily medicated. I wouldn't rely very much on anything he told you. We won't upset him, please. You mustn't. Mr. Harder, it's Detective O'Brien. It's uh, about something you told us last night. I told you everything. You said you followed our car from the station to the house. You followed our car all the way from the station to the house. Jeez, it's gonna have another attack. Did you follow the car all the way from the station? No. Just a minute. No. Come on, Kev. 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 If he did follow us, he would have seen the switch. He's covering for someone. He's all confused. We didn't learn a thing. No one goes into that room. Dr. Reynolds, could this man have stayed outside all night and then shot someone through a window across the yard and then run like a bat out of hell? I can't say. You're a doctor. Educated guess? It's not very likely. Thanks very much. Dr. Thanks a lot. Now, Braddock, can I talk to you for a minute? Yeah. 
Kirkwood. I'm Tom Kirkwood. I'm from the Eagle. I'm trying to get a little background information. You remember her? Yeah, I remember Michelle. She was good people, you know what I mean? How come you want to talk to me? You were on the track team. Yeah. Bizarre about her father, isn't it? Killing that guy like that. Where'd you dig this up? In the files. You know her father? Yeah, I met him a couple of times. He was sick, you know, his heart. That's how come they were in such a hurry to get married. Who was getting married? Jeff and Michelle. He couldn't keep them apart. The three of us, really. And then... The registrar says he's not in school anymore. No, he dropped off the team after it happened. And then he just dropped out entirely. I see him once in a while, but it's hard. It could happen to any one of us, you know? You were there when the bomb went off? And the guys were out getting drunk, and the girls still had their relays to run. Well, thanks a lot. Some luck, huh? Hey, Mel! Come here. Really great article. This is probably the best article you've ever written, Tom. Well, I've been known to rise to occasions. You know, you really do have a way with words, especially like that part about anarchy being loosed on the world. Oh, you really like that part, huh? Mm-hmm. I like those words. Well, they're not really mine. You mean you stole them? It's a quotation from Yeats. Well, I don't know, Tom. There's no quote marks here. Hmm? It's a famous poem. My teacher always said, if you don't use quotation marks, it's stealing. <laughs> It's awful. Just awful. Such a pretty girl. Why, is it more of a tragedy because she's pretty? It's not what I am yet. Let me take a look at it. Kevin. Yeah. This kid, Michelle Harder's teammate, he's the same guy who was at her father's trucking company. It adds up. Let's go, Frankie. He's been working here for about three months. What do you think's left for you? He didn't come in today, Frankie. Let's go. Dr. Roberts, call for Dr. Roberts, line 322. Uh -huh. Hmm. No. Mm. Mm. Yes, that would be fine. Mm-hmm. Just a moment, please. Third floor nursing station. Uh, Midtown South Precinct. Could I speak to the officer on duty at the harder room? Just a moment, please. Officer Moreland, telephone, please. Officer Moreland, nursing station. Dr. Jacobson to emergency. You can use the phone down there, sir. see you before. Why did you do this? Hi, Jeff. Did they find that kid yet? Kobe and Carson are staking out the apartment. We're just going down to relieve him. He's bound to come home sooner or later. Kevin, did you call the hospital? Hospital? Yeah, the guard outside Harder's room. Somebody called him. Not me. It wasn't the desk sergeant. They figured it must have been you. Check it out, okay? Mr. Hart. Mr. Harder, I can't let you do this. No. 
this is how it should have been. I don't want you to take the blame for me. I don't want anyone else to get hurt. How can they hurt me? It's not right. It wasn't right to kill him. It just goes on and on. Michelle, and now him. I want to tell what happened to the police. I just want it to end. It's old hatreds that killed her, Jeff. And I'm an old man. Mr. Harder. I can't give her life back. But she loved you. No. I can give you yours. No. Take it. Go away. Go away. Go back. I can't, Mr. Harder. Go, go away. I don't know what to say. You know why I killed him. You have to tell me, Jeff. I was outside, you know. When you took him out, I mean. The street was blocked. Yes. Across the street, there's an empty parking garage. I had the gun. And you decided to kill him then? You were right in front of him. I could only see him for a second. You were right next to him. I didn't want anyone to get hurt. Except Brinsley. He killed Michelle. He was never in prison, you know. He was never charged with anything. It was him. He was the one who ordered it. Well, that's what we want to talk to you about, Jeff. How did you get mixed up with these people? You mean over there? I'm not. It's just because of Michelle. I told you that. But you know who ordered the bombing. Oh, no. I wasn't mixed up with them. I wouldn't want anything to do with them. Mr. Delacourt told me about it. Robin Delacourt? Crocker's lawyer? Yeah. Yeah, I wondered about that. He told me about it. He told me where the house was. What's so urgent, Counselor? About the hearing on your motion for dismissal tomorrow. I just wanted to be sure you'll be ready. <laughs> well, thank you. Of course I will. It's rather open and shut, don't you think? Not if you're counting on police negligence. Well, that's all I need. If you assume that reasonable prudence could have prevented it, which you can't assume in the case of a determined assassin. Like a sick man who can't take two steps without collapsing. Oh, he's not a suspect anymore. I thought you knew that. Apparently, it was a much younger man. New evidence seems to suggest that it was part of a whole conspiracy. See you in court, Counselor. How was that? Perfect. Now, let's let him stew over it. Get me home. Mr. Delacourt's residence. Mr. Delacourt, please. Tell him it's Jeff Merrill. Mr. Jeff Merrill? I'm sorry, but would you call Mr. Delacourt at his office in the morning, please? Tell him it's important. I've got to talk to him now. He's very insistent, says it's urgent. Just a moment. Who's this? It's Jeff. Where are you? Staying with the girl. The police are looking for me. You remember? That thing we talked about? I talked to a lot of people. Yeah, well, there's only one thing the police want to see me for. And the two of us? We did a lot of talking about it. Just a minute. Henry. Yes, sir? Would you give me the dissenting opinions on Rasmussen, please? They're uh, in the library. Yes, sir. All right. What's this about? You know damn well what it's about. You told me about Brinsley. You told me where they were hiding him. I think you need a lawyer. We ought to talk. I need money. I've got a friend in San Francisco. He said I could stay there. Well, then, let's talk about it. I'll be right there. Uh, no. We need to be discreet about this. Are you near the campus? I can get there. Fine. Meet me at the stadium in an hour. One hour. You better be there, Delacourt, because if the cops find me first... Then make sure they don't. Well, 
learned you. Maybe he's not going to show. He's nervous. I have to be a fool not to be nervous. My kid's no fool. Colby, you see anything? Just yet. San Francisco, keep you going till you get your feet in the ground. You're not buying me for a lousy $3,000. Under the circumstances, I think... Under the circumstances, I think you're gonna have to do a hell of a lot better. Think things through, Jeff. I never told you to kill him. I never went looking for you, you know. I know how upset you were about Michelle. I was trying to help. By telling me where Brinsley was coming in, where he was gonna be, where they were taking him? Maybe you're right. It was indiscreet of me. I never imagined you'd misinterpret what I was saying. He's not saying a damn thing. I'm not playing games, Delacorte. Neither am I, young man. I think I've been very generous. Now, excuse me. I suggest you wait here a minute. I'd rather no one saw us leaving together. No way! You set this whole thing up. I'm not taking the rap by myself for a lousy three grand. Let go of me. Listen, I need some serious money. Oh. Go after him. Call me, do it. Call me. Police blotter is no guide through the maze of a man's heart. There I can't even tell our most despicable acts from our noblest. Maybe that's why I write columns instead of novels. Was Jeff Merrill an Avenger or a murderer? Do I make him my hero? Or my villain? And I feel the light. 